I'm in Idaho today and I'm actually at ProPete headquarters and I'm here with Taylor and he's going to show me around the warehouse and show me how ProPete is made and manufactured and distributed throughout the country and we should have a lot of fun. So with that, let's get to it. Uh, Taylor's going to be the one showing me around today. What is your role here at ProPete? What do you do? How long have you been here? I've been here about uh, three years. I uh, run the office, inbound trucks, outbound trucks, different things, inventory, um, as well as participate in operating the plant, different things mm -hmm. like that. And you do a little bit of social media on the side? Social too. media, yep. You wear a lot of hats. Yep, a lot of hats. <laughs> He's a busy guy. <laughs> Uh, but today he's decided uh, to be very generous to show me around and just kind of show me how things are done here. I'm really excited to check it out. Let's go check it out. Yeah, great. All right, we've made it in and I see a lot of raw material laying around. You just want to kind of walk me through what's here and, and how it all gets put right. together. Yep. So if you look here at this first bin, this is our 1152. Um, traditionally with your fertilizers, you have your NPKs. Um, 1152 is where we're going to get our phosphorus levels from. We have our ammonium sulfate, which we use for our nitrogen level. And continuing down through the bins, we have some potassium. And over here in the back, we have some Hiding in the back, it's SOP. So that's where all the raw material is kept, and then it's pulled whenever it's needed, and right. and then what happens from there? So we have a, an operator that runs this loader here, and depending on the blend that we make, we throw in the nutrients, the NPKs, and everything is scaled down to the pound. So when we know if we want to run a 13.58, we know exactly what NPK is going into our system. One of the benefits of Pro peat fertilizer in general is that it's a homogeneous blend, exactly. which means that everything is is baked into the prill all the same. Right. And so does that process happen in the mixers over here or does that happen somewhere else? Nope. So traditionally when you open a bag of fertilizer, you're going to see different colors. Right. And that's going to be your different NPKs. Right. And this process here that you see is the end result of what those companies are going to get through. Mm -hmm. So we take it after that blending and process it further as we go through the plant. Oh, okay. So I'm getting ahead of myself, oh, you're good. what you're saying. <laughs> no, you're good. <laughs> Remind everybody who might not know how long ProPete has been in business. Construction started in 2016, and mm -hmm. I think our first physical operating year was in 2017. Very cool. So ProPete is in its third year, and they're already making a dent in the industry, and they're already doing a lot for the DIY community especially, which is why I'm really excited to be here and to meet these guys and, and to see what this is all about, because as you know, I've been using ProPete in my front yard this year and I've seen great results and I'm excited to continue using it in the future and to continue learning about it and what better place to learn about it than the plant itself. Yeah, we're <laughs> glad you made it. So one of the big differentiating factors between ProPete and other fertilizers on the market is the use of peat moss as kind of the base, right. the foundation of, of everything that you guys put out. So kind of give us a little explanation of why peat moss and for those who don't know the benefits of it. Okay. With peat moss we have of course our water retaining capabilities. Yeah. So anywhere where water is an issue that's an added benefit. Mm -hmm. And then with peat moss we have the carbon inside. Yeah. And carbon is how we make our bond with our nutrients and how we get our time slow release. Yeah. Is through our carbon bond. But as carbon is added into the soil, that's our that's your organics. That's what life of soil and turf and everything is, is made up of, of carbon. Yeah. We realize that our turf needs that carbon. Right. And that and carbon, it likes it. And it likes it. Mm -hmm. It loves it. It's that's what's feeding our nutrients and mm -hmm. making a live thriving. Yeah. It's creating that microbial activity right. exactly. in the soil structure and the soil profile. Exactly. To kind of get things moving along. Right. Yeah. And I will say that for people that live in areas that are kind of a drier climate like me, having having that water retention factor right. with the peat really does make a difference. Right. Um, that's that's been one of my favorite things about 
about using propeat. In most fertilizers, you're getting just a plain filler. It doesn't have any nutrient value. Yeah. But because of propeat and the peat moss that we have, we don't have to use that no analysis filler. We can yeah. add benefit back to the soil. No fluff. No fluff. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so our, our peat is still pretty fine when it comes in. I mean, you can look at that and just see, think it would work out for us. But we actually take it and grind it down even smaller. So oh really? More homogenized prill. Yep. Wow. So I'll show you what it looks like after we grind it down. Now the the peat obviously comes on pallets in these bales here. Right. What do you use to break these down from here to here? Well, we just cut them open. Uh, uh -huh. They're compressed. Right. And then uh, we tip them off the pallets, and then we can shovel them in here. Because this is kind of like a bigger size version of what like you'd get from a Home Depot. Exactly. You know, and you've you've got a. You've got to break it down. It's usually pretty hard. I can even cut it open so you can see. Oh, here we go. Live action. Let's see what it looks like. <laughs> I oh, mean, that's pretty soft. It's pretty soft, but pushing but there it's, a little it's further, compacted. it's compacted. Yeah. I mean, you can. So that first layer soft. Do you, do you bring like a tractor in here to do that, or no? Do you have we shovels. Just, we or? just take our loader and then break it up, and then come over here. Oh, okay. I'll show you. Kind of a process that helps break it up is we have a chopper here. Oh, cool. And inside the chopper has blades, and that's going to break it up to make it better available for our, I don't know. Yeah, that'll make it easier. <laughs> yeah, yep. See, I'm, I'm the Honomar guy that says, okay, just grab a shovel. Oh, right. You're like, okay, we're bringing the tractor. Yep, <laughs> yep. So we, that loader after it's in that bin, yeah. loads it up, throws it in here, chops it up. And then it takes it on and yep. gets it in the mix. So the peat gets pulled up and the, the arch on top of there is our hammer mill. Okay. So we've got one for our peat and then we've also got one over here for our NPKs. The NPKs that were blended on the other side of the facility mm -hmm. come through, the blend goes up the leg and into the hammer mill, and by this time, it's getting broke down into a small powder. So this is where everything comes together. Exactly. So it's it's homogenized on the pan as a as a powder. Right. And then it, the next step, I'm guessing, is where it becomes the frills. Right. Okay. Yep. So look at our pan. This big pan spins, and the product, the powder, is coming onto the pan, and each time it circles around. More, a little bit of binder and more product is added okay. to make the size that we need. Cool. And then eventually the size, the desired size gets kicked off the side mm -hmm. and conveyed up to this conveyor. Cool. So after our product comes through the wall and off the pan, we put it into this big drum dryer. Mm -hmm. On this side we have a big uh, jet engine type of blower and that heat is siphoned down through that drum. The drum actually spins and as that product spins around in the drum and falls, it gets dried. So that way we can get a hard, um, consistent prill instead of uh, some other companies have inconsistencies in their prill size. Some of them, when you get look at their bag, it's going to be soft one day and not full through your spreader and it's going to mm -hmm. clump up. And sometimes it's a complete opposite, it's super hard. Yeah, um, I've, I've had experiences with that, even in videos that I've put out on my channel. You know, there's, there's products out there that, like you said, have inconsistencies in prill size, will have clumps like that you wonder if somehow moisture was left in the bag. That's one thing I like about Pro P2, and, I, and I've noticed that is in the product that I've used, which has only been the 1704, the greens grade this year, mm -hmm. um, that's been kind of my introduction to Pro P. Right. I've noticed that all those prills are like, like pretty much exactly the same. Right. Like there's complete consistency in the whole bag. Right. And that's one thing we want to share with our customers is if we can make a consistent product and if it's not dusty, which you can see over here is our, we added dust control. Mm -hmm. And so we try to eliminate the dust, try to make it more consistent for the customer so it doesn't have different variances. Um, just a better overall end result for our homeowners we want to have a good experience. Yeah. Have it be a good experience. Yeah. So this, this is the dust control. Right. So how does that work? All it is, um, we have a product that we get brought in that uh, we can spray on a coating Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's dirty now. We're not running the plant, but some of this has been sprayed with that coating. But as it goes through, on this other side, there's an elevator and uh, some the cooler, which also spins. That product gets coated thoroughly. Okay. So as the product is coming through the dryer, we have a big uh, fan that's outside and collecting our dust in the cyclone. So it gets sucked out. All anything that isn't a hard or a larger size prill is going to get pulled out of this dust system and sucked out into our cyclone and then we can actually recycle it back onto the pan. Oh cool. And that's awesome. Yeah. Then you're not you're not losing material throughout throughout the whole exactly. process. Yep. You can you can reuse that, put that back into another batch. Exactly.
and even products that you know either doesn't make spec or um, doesn't come out the way exactly we want it to as far as size comes we can rescreen it through that's cool run it through that's awesome so nothing's wasted through our plant yeah i bet the investors like that right <laughs> yep <laughs> so all the dust that's collected inside goes through the lines that we were looking at before right. and they, they make their way out here into this yep and this is our cyclone and we're as it goes through the dryer we're obviously baking the product the moisture we're baking off yeah is going out the fan and blowing into the atmosphere and then the dust and all the actual NPKs and product is actually being siphoned back down through the cyclone mm -hmm. and then we recycle it back into the plant. That's cool. So all of that dust gets eventually gets reused and yep. repurposed into future yep. products. And then all the moisture that, that's taken out is just pumped out here. Yep. And that water's not bad for the environment. No. So no. that's that's good. <laughs> anyway, after our dust coating is put on, it comes back through and runs through our cooler. We don't want to bag our hot product hot because if we do, we will get the clumping. Yeah. And so this is in place just to cool the product back down, make it more usable for us as we go through our bagging system. So this is our screener. It's gonna sift off the different sizes of our product. Here you can see we have three different conveyors going up. We have our greens grade, which is in the middle, our fairway grade, which is uh, 240 SGN. And then we have our oversize, which a lot of times we can rerun. Um, and we also sell that at a discount. Oh, okay. So the oversize is kind of like a byproduct of everything else right. that gets filtered out. Exactly. And and you sell that still. We do. Yep. But it's at a discounted rate. Right. And is that sold primarily to homeowners or Yep, homeowners. Yeah. Yep. Cool. And then obviously the, the greens and fairway grades, they're primarily golf industry. Exactly. Like yep. That. They're a little more premier product. Um, they're a lot more consistent in their size, like you mentioned before. Mm -hmm just a lot more user friendly. Mm -hmm. And it's not exclusive to the golf industry either, obviously. Right. Um, Yard Mastery is carrying greens grade uh, and it is available that way to homeowners. I'll go ahead and leave a link in the description below. You can find that. That's exactly what I've been using on my yard, my front yard anyway this year. Um, and it's awesome. Using a greens grade product as a homeowner is like a dream. Right. Because it spreads so nice and it, it gets down into the canopy of the grass, especially for people like me, as I was telling you, I'm mowing my front yard at three quarters of an inch. Uh, it disappears into the canopy of the grass. And as you were mentioning to me earlier, it breaks down a lot faster, Right. which is right. ideal. This is our, just our storage, storage tanks. bins, storage tanks. And as we, after we run it through our Skinner process, we then can run it through this conveyor and up into our bagging system. From here, we can either load bulk bags. We have 500 pounds, 1,000 pounds, one ton product. We also can do large bulk, truck bulk. Um, better for the homeowners though, is we can bag in 50 pound bags and 25 pound bags. Mm -hmm. Through here, you can just see all of our finished product. There's the good stuff. And it's, uh... yep, <laughs> there it is. There it is. <laughs> I'll, I'll take that home with me, right? Okay, there's throw it on the back of the <laughs> we'll van. Throw it right? on the back of the van. We'll make room. <laughs> we'll make room for it. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, so, we're dirty. Hey, that's okay. Part of the process, but uh, everything's wrapped and before it's stored away. He keeps everything. telling me that he's dirty here. It's it's dirty. It's a mess. This is a working warehouse, people. This is <laughs> this is what it's supposed to look like. If everything was completely clean, like this fresh pallet right here, nothing else is getting done. Right. Right. That's right. that's the whole point. I was telling him my garage is the same way. It's always messy. It's because it's a working garage. Right. And. He knows where everything is around here and can get at it whenever he wants to and I know where everything is in my garage and, and I can make room for things and things get messy. It's just the way it goes. Yep. It's the way it goes. So these are obviously fresh off the line. Um, we're getting towards the end of the season right now so it's probably starting to slow down a little bit. Let's talk spring. Okay. So things come off the line, they're, they're wrapped up on the pallet. How long are they sitting here before they're out the door? This year for us, you know, we tried to stockpile as much as we can beforehand so we have inventory on yeah, hand yeah so when orders start coming we can just get them shipped out They're ready to go um mm -hmm. as the season continued like our 1704 we were trying as fast as we can to produce that product and get it out the door just to keep up yep. with demand yeah um, so it's coming off the line and it's out in a matter of days right that's cool right going into fall and 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 winter before we know it what's the plan now is it is it to kind of get restocked and ready to go yep. for the next season and, and even now i mean we're september we still got a lot of orders coming in for 
fall time for applications. Fall. Yeah, everybody's getting into the renovation season and right. and getting everything ready to go for overseeding and exactly. things like that. Yep. And they're transitioning, you know, we have like our 1704 with a little higher nitrogen, mm -hmm. which is more popular for the spring. Yep. We have some of these other blends that are going to help, you know, give you a little more phosphorus, a little more potassium, yep. help give those roots a nice solid base for the winter or dormant seasons. Yeah. And for some of those who aren't, don't have the seasons like we do here in the West, um, they're going to benefit from those fertilizers as well in the fall. Yeah, totally. I know that guy. Well, that's going to go ahead and wrap up the, the grand tour of the warehouse. And I can't thank you enough for inviting me out here to see this. Yeah. This has been the coolest thing for me to see. Um, it's, it's fun to, to use a product and enjoy the product that you're using, but it's a whole nother level to come see how it's made. Right. And you guys have a really cool operation here and, and obviously a bright future ahead of you. And I can't wait to see where that goes. Um, but thank you again for showing me around. There's great results that come from using the product. I'll leave a link to their website in the description below for you guys to check out to learn more about their company and what they're doing. And of course, there's already links in the description for purchasing their products. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.